Well, praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in it. I'm grateful tonight for this opportunity to be able to have our prayer call on tonight. And Pastor Jonathan McKnight, speak blessings over you as well as your family. My prayer is that you and your family are safe and all is well, especially in this season, in this times that we're living in, in the moments by which we are engaging in. We're thankful unto God for this opportunity, again, for us to be able to come together and declare this Tuesday evening a night of prayer. I'm grateful to God, and we're speaking blessings over this prayer call tonight, believing God for miracles, believing God for doors to open, and yet believing God for one of the things I think that we really need to uh, seek God for like never before, is I believe we need to seek God um, for direction. And I want to just take a moment. Father, we bless this call tonight, and I'm asking you to give us your grace and your mercy as we embark upon uh, the unity of prayer and the power of prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I just want to take a moment before I get into uh, the teaching by which God has given me to give to us tonight, to share with us tonight. I I just think that it is absolutely um, necessary for us to take just a few moments to bring back to focus something that I think that we need to um, bring into focus And that is, we're in a season of um, worldwide history. We're in a season, and we're living, and we should be grateful. We are living as we're yet speaking. We're living in a global pandemic. Um, and the pandemic by which we're living in has taken about 4.6 million lives around the world. And something to me that amazes me, and I have to be able to say it, and then I'm going to talk about something that I'm be com- you know, really compassionate about tonight is about this amazing God we serve. And that is, how often are you seeking God and I'm seeking God and we're seeking God for direction daily? Sometimes when people, when we say direction And this is absolutely just something that the Lord is leading me to share with you on tonight before we get into the meat of what we're going to talk about. And that is, that scripture, Proverbs 3, that says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Trust in the Lord, lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. I really wonder how often we really take that scripture to heart to ask God for direction. This is a season by which you cannot just do things, make moves without the direction of God. You you have to do it. I have to do it. We have to do it. It is crucial because people are now making decisions and there is no point of recovery from the decisions that they're making. And with hand in hand with those decisions, there must be wisdom. I got to get back on my stance on the wisdom of God Because I really feel like people, everybody that's leaving here, 
don't believe everybody wanted to leave here. And what I mean by that is I believe that sometimes decisions are being made for us through others. And we ought to be aware that, you know, there's been times, I, I'll use this as a personal example, there's been times that I've had to go back home to my hometown and um, wanting to see my mother uh, because of um, perhaps I might have been in a situation to where I was going to um, even a cemetery. And I, I would call my mom and I would say to her, love you, but I'm not stopping by. I'm talking about 15 minutes away from where she lives. And the reason why is because of the atmosphere, even though it was outdoors. I used wisdom to make sure that the unknowing, yes, I had on the mask, yes, I was social distancing, but the unknowing gave me wisdom enough to not play with what I don't know. Of course, I wanted to go by, see my mom, and, you know, hey, probably could have picked up some oxtails or something, you know how that rolls. But because I love my mom and I don't want to take a risk, not fear, and I'm so sick and tired of, and I, yes, I said sick and tired of, and I mean this, sick and tired of people trying to make a religious decree as if though you're afraid if you're using wisdom. You, you, The Bible says the Lord has given every man a measure of faith, and and don't you can't see others' faith. Faith is measured by the heart of the task and the belief, of God. But just because we might use wisdom does not mean that we're afraid. Just because we might use safety, that doesn't mean we are afraid. I just want to say, in the spirit realm, we need to stop the madness of trying to act like we have so much faith, but yet if something, it, 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 if something happens, it, we push the panic button in so many other areas of our life. We don't, we don't, we don't even have enough faith to, to, to sow into the kingdom to tithe because we feel like we figure we can't afford to give God ten percent. So I'm just using that as an example. There are so many things that we we use our human knowledge on one hand. But then we're afraid on the end of it. I'm just said all of that to say this: you all be safe and you be careful. I was just, I was just um, very moved when I saw earlier this evening that um, in the last ten days in the Miami, we're definitely praying for our children and our our school employees and and teachers and the people who are working in the school system. Uh, we're praying. We're definitely praying for you tonight, um, for sure. Um, in the last 10 days in the Miami-Dade school system, there's been 15 employees in 10 days that have died of COVID. One out of every one out of every four COVID cases now are now children. I bring this back to Something I started saying in July, it's now September. On these prayer calls, I began to say to to each prayer warrior, prayer listener who was on the call, I said, you all, the Lord has shown me that we need to pray for our children. I hear a cry for our children. I hear weeping because of our children and what's getting ready to happen. Well, it's upon us. It's right in front of us, it's right around us every day. We need to pray because 
they're not talking about it. But it's painful for me to say this because I know the inside track on some things. Our children are dying from this COVID-19, from Delta variant. And some of them even have conditions that even though they're young, the truth of the matter is, is our children have diminished in overall health. Um, in, in, in this technological age, our children don't even get the necessary exercise and have the necessary energy because everything is social media, everything is computer. Every, they, they don't, they, their bodies don't go through uh, things like when I was coming up in middle school and high school. You know, we, you know, we, PE was a subject. You had to, you had to pass PE. You had to pass exercise and fitness. Uh, those days are no more because of for many, many reasons. But our children are not as healthy. They, the, our food is not as, as as nutritional as it used to be. And I'm kind of going off a little bit, uh, but I'm going how God is is leading me. So, you know, the, the, the children now, they, they, they say water is nasty and, you know, it's Coke, it's Pepsi, it's, it's so many other things. It's, it's, it's that, that our, our kids are not. Um, eating, exercising, and they're just sitting down in front of computers all day when they're in school or when they're not in school. It's all about social media. It's all about um, communicating particular ways, and we need to pray for them. They're being thrust into a world that is fighting their minds, that's fighting their bodies, that's fighting their skills of social interaction and respect, and we need to pray for them. Um, and I feel that it wasn't on my notes that I've taken tonight, but it's from the heart of God to your ears and to my ears that we need to pray. We need to pray. I believe with all my heart in just a few days, I don't know what it's going to be, but some of the corruption in this nation is getting ready to be exposed. I, I literally feel a prophetic on me right now. Uh, it's literally getting ready to be exposed. Uh, even the games in our media, even the false or negligent reporting of what's really true in this country, um, God is going to deal with it. Even in our science, even in our medicine, I'm speaking that God's going to expose the corruption. They, they're not even properly seeing if some things are safe. They're just trying to rush the people. Don't even know. Taking a risk and risking lives. It's not God's way. So I speak over you tonight for wisdom. And I will not be, you know I'm saying as, as a pastor, I'm not going to be pressured by anything or anyone to pressure me into not using wisdom. Even leading this great church sanctuary praise ministry, I will not be pressured, particularly by ones who didn't call me when the call came from God, it's not that I can't take advice. It there's wisdom and strong counsel. But at the end of the day, it's the Holy Spirit and God's word and God's timing. You can't be chosen by God to lead and not willing to consult God on what to do. We need to follow God and not just follow trends. Well, that's one of the problems I see in the kingdom of God. Is we're, we're looking at others. And what others are doing, then we automatically think because um, there's, there's nothing 
um, seem to be happening, we want to follow what others are doing. That's not the way God operates. He said, in all thy ways, in all of them, not just some of them, not just a few of them, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct that path. I want to read something for you tonight and give me about 10 or 12 minutes, and then I'll pray with you because when I asked the Lord to, this afternoon what to share tonight on tonight's prayer call, he said, go to Ephesians 3 and 20 and 21. And let me read it for you. Now to him who is able to do one scripture says, let me read this from, I'm, I'm going to read a couple of versions for you. First of all, let me read the, the King James Version. That's going to be the first one. Then I'm going to read the NIV. And maybe one other version. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly Above all, leaving nothing out, that we ask, sounds like prayer to me, right? Or think, or can comprehend, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, throughout all seasons, throughout all ages. I'm going to do ages two ways. Ages mean a, a particular dispensation of time and throughout all ages, whether it's children, adults, grandmama, great grand, whoever, a world without end. Amen. That's, that's the King James Version. Now, let me go. There are two more versions I want to read for you. I want to read the NIV Version, and then I'm going to read the New Living Translation Version. How about that tonight? The NIV version says it like this. Now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations. Sometimes when we pray, we pray for generational salvation, generation deliverance. So we want to rebuke and, and come against every generational curse forever and ever. Amen. That was the NIV version. And I want to do the New Living Translations. I said, Pastor, you really, you're breaking uh, down three versions. Simply want you to hear it. It said, now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. I want to say something. The Lord brought this thought to me tonight. And I want to deal with an incredible God that answers prayer. An incredible God. I want to take a moment just to give you about 60 seconds of heart to heart. First of all, I want to deal with the word incredible. Because still, that doesn't describe this amazing God. But I'm using a word that I was led by the Spirit to use tonight. Because the truth of the matter is, I want you to think about something. Since 2020, there has been about 18 months have gone by. Um, about 18 months. And if you think about something and thinking about where we are 
18 months later, and if you take 18 months and multiply it on an average of 30 days, There's been 540 days, more than a year and a half. That we have been in this pandemic and I don't know anyone that you can talk to that hasn't lost someone either in their family, in their workplace, in their neighborhood, just in their surrounding, are connected to someone that you've probably associated with in some way, shape, or form. But this incredible God has saw fit to spare every one of us on this phone. He's an incredible God that answers prayers. And while we see so many things that seem to be going, and and I'm really full while I'm talking about it. I've I've lost, I was sharing with a pastor friend of mine today. I've lost more, me and my family. I don't want to seem like it's selfish, but we've lost more close relatives in the last 12 to 14 months than I've ever known in my lifetime. Have another service on this coming Saturday. But this incredible God that answers prayer is still good to us. He is our everything. He he gives us a chance to express to him everything that's going on with us. He promised that he'll be there, and he is. He said, we ask in faith, but we don't doubt. But we believe in our heart those things which we ask him. He hears us, and he answers us. He's incredible. When we look at the word incredible, there are many definitions. One of them is difficult to believe. So, so, so awesome. Sometimes it's difficult to believe. Some of us have walked in rooms and walked in places, and we've been around people, but yet he, the incredible God, protected us. There are some things I've, environments I had to go in. I wasn't necessarily um, too anxious to go in them, but because of my responsibility and the call, this incredible God. There are some teachers that go, are going to school every day. There are some students that have to sit up in school, try to learn, a subject that might be difficult to them in a mask and have to look over at the child next to them or the one behind them or the one in front of them and not even knowing what's in the room. But this incredible God that we pray to for protection and a blood covering through his son Jesus, this incredible God is who we're talking about tonight. Incredible also means extraordinary. Incredible means magnificent. Incredible means wonderful. Incredible means spectacular. Incredible means remarkable. It means it means also unbelievable, and sometimes it means beyond belief. Another definition of incredible is unconceivable. Can't even comprehend how awesome he is. And there's another fraction of interpretation that says as to seem impossible, as to seem impossible. 
and we fully knowing that it might be impossible with man, but this incredible God is possible with. Some of us tonight, we're facing some situation that look like impossible is all over it. Or you don't even know how it's going to work out. When something's going to start and when something's going to end. We're living every day in August and now in September and now in 2021. We have to live in the mystery of life, not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing where it's going to come from. Sounds like faith to me because Hebrews 11 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So God is not obligated to show me everything. So many people want God to show. God is not going to show you everything. And even if he did, you wouldn't understand it. He said, my ways in Isaiah 55 are not as your ways. My thoughts are not as your thoughts. You can't comprehend me. I'm unconceivable. You won't understand me because I don't just look and do things for your now. I look into your future. And it might not look like it's working out for your good. I mean, Romans 8 now, we know that all things won't work together for our good because we're going to love God and serve him and trust him when we can't trace him through situations in life. But make no mistake about it. With the earthquake in Haiti, with Ida traveling a thousand miles from New Orleans and Louisiana and Mississippi all the way up through to the northeast, and many people have lost their lives and still are. He's still an incredible God that answers prayers. With millions of children. Testing positive for COVID. With the hospitals being overfilled, with they having to pay and bring portable morgues to medical facilities, he's still an incredible God. With flooding, with earthquakes, with fires, with pestilence, with a shortage of food, with difficulties with gasoline. With millions of people facing eviction right now. With governmental benefits being canceled. He's still an incredible God. That answers prayer. And yes, times are difficult for many. And for us. And yes, the loss. Is great, and some of the grief seems to be unbearable. It does not diminish his authority or his sovereignty. He's still God, and he's still incredible, and he's still unconceivable, and he's still wonderful, and he's still spectacular. He's still remarkable, and in some situation, it almost seems like he's unbelievable. And tonight, I believe in God that he's going to do exceeding abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. I believe in God tonight that even things that I need him to do that I don't even know yet, the unconceivable God is going to work situations out. As the elderly would say in our church, coming up as a little more, for danger seen and unseen. He's a recognized path around pitfalls and traps and things that the enemy has set up to bring destruction and to blindside us with tragedy and fear. I decree and I declare that that incredible God that answers prayers is going to 
fully understand that we're trusting him. For we far be, we are far beyond foolish to think that we can make it in this world without him. We are not that ignorant, nor do we try to claim that much intellectual ability when you don't even know who all is in your neighborhood and you don't even know all what was in the food or water you drank today. We have to trust this incredible God. We have to trust him because he answers prayers. He told us whatsoever, Mark 11, things we desire when we pray. Believe that we shall receive them and we shall have them. Why? Because he's able to do exceeding, abundant, above all. There's nothing he cannot do that we ask or think. That we ask or we think. We cannot under no circumstances, not believe that he can't work it out for us. There's some things that I believe that God's going to do tonight. There's some miracles I believe that God's going to open up in our life. And I'm believing God that his power, what power? The power of faith. Because faith is power by itself. And then the power of his spirit that lives inside of us. Which we pray according to his word. And we're going to believe that God is going to do what we don't even imagine he will do. Getting ready to go to the throne of grace. God is incredible, people. He's not just the best one out there. He's the only one out there that can make a difference in our life. The CDC needs his breath. Washington, D.C. needs his breath. The Senate, the House, the President, the Vice President, every doctor and every nurse that's helping people in hospitals or hospice, they do not have breath that causes a soul to live. That they can breathe freely. Like the breath of God. The next time you pray, I want you to trust him like he's incredible. The next time we pray, which is getting ready to be in a moment, I want you to believe him like he's incredible. I want you to talk to him like he's magnificent. I want you to trust him like he's spectacular. I want you to thank him like he's remarkable. And I want you to trust him like there's nothing impossible that he can do. If you do that, you know what will happen? You'll get a peace. That surpasses all understanding. Because if you look at this world and you look at the news and you listen to people, your faith can be weakened or in some cases diminished. If you if you just look at your bank account, 
Some of y'all are about to faint right now. If you if you can just look at your bank account and not see Jehovah Jireh, you'll rush to do something else that might not be in the will of God. You start making moves without him. You can't make moves without him. You got to acknowledge him in all your ways so he can direct your path. I've been praying for discernment like I've never prayed for it before because we can't make a move without it. We want to pray for peace in the city of Chicago. Just this weekend alone, 66 people were shot and children were killed while they were in the house, not outside, in the house. Four-year-old boy getting a haircut inside somebody's house and bullets come flying through the window and kill a four-year-old child. We need that incredible God that gives us protection when we think we're in a safe place. Thank God that this incredible God, which is the only true and living God that I'm talking about, that answers prayer, he's the one we have to trust. I am not crazy enough to try and put all my confidence in what those men and women are saying on that television. They're looking straight. Some of them are looking straight in the camera and know they lying and acting like they're telling the truth and then want to forget the lie they told two days later. The devil is a liar. That corruption coming down, people. Y'all trust me on this. But this incredible God, as I get ready to get on my knees and pray with you, he's the God of what seems like is impossible. He's the God of miracles. He's the God of the supernatural breakthrough. And I'm going to pray just for a few moments to this incredible God that answers prayers. Whatever you need him to do, whatever you want him to do it, whatever needs to happen for you and your family. I want you to act as if though and believe as if though you and I are serving the incredible God. Father, we thank you tonight for your love, your mercy, your grace. For your good, your God, and you're worthy to be praised, and there is nobody like you. Before we dare ask you for anything, we tell you thank you for your forever loving grace, for your committed mercy, and your tireless grace. Thank you for being the lovers of our spirit and the foundation of our soul. Without you, God, tonight, we fully understand that we are nothing, but through you we can do all things. I decree that Philippians 4 and 13 will spread throughout this prayer to where when someone is weak or in despair or broken, Overwhelmed, when look like anxiety and stress are about to move totally into their homes. I decree and I declare that right now by your grace and by your mercy, we are standing on your promises to believe and trust you right now. You're the most sure thing of power and force. You're the one, God. You're the substance of our life. 
You're the foundation of our soul. You're our peace. You're our helper. You're our protector. You're our shield. You're our guide. You're our buckler. You know you're our healer. You're our provider. You're our strength. You're our compass. You're our direction. You simply but profoundly are an answer. You're an incredible, God, and tonight we ask you to heal those that are sick. So many forms of sickness, so many forms of disease, not only COVID but cancer and every other type of sickness, infirmity, and disease, and infection, I decree and I declare that by Jesus' stripes we're healed. Cover our children, our school teachers and administrators and employees in the school system. Protect them. Our military troops, protect them. The streets in our neighborhoods of law enforcement and first responders who are trying to protect, who are doing it the right way, who are not operating in corruption but in truth. Protect them. And God, shake our government into truth. And remove those who are operating in corruption. This is not a game. This is life. We pray now for wisdom. We need it like never before. We need direction like never before. We need families to be covered. We need our unlaved saved loved ones to be saved. We need revival. We need peace and unity and love in this earth. We come against hatred and we come against social divide and we come against, oh God, the things that are dividing the lives and hearts of people. We pray for those who are suffering from Hurricane Ida all over this nation, those who are trying to evacuate from fires, those who are trying to survive in Haiti, those who are dealing with tragedies that we might not even know about yet, pestilence and sickness and lack and poverty and stress. I pray for the homeless. I pray for the helpless. And definitely, God, give strength to the hopeless. And I pray, God, tonight that you're the God that will do exceedingly abundantly above. We can actually think. We thank you for supernatural favor and, God, overwhelming supply. We thank you, God, that you will order our steps in discernment. We're going to follow you and not worrying about what's trending, not what's popular, and even what's accepted. I come against the spirit of lawmakers who think that they can violate your word and it'd be okay. Shut it down or either remove because we need people who honor and respect your word, who believe it, who are convicted and understand that nothing, no law can be written that man could put on a piece of paper and it defeats the word of God. We thank you, God, now that in this season, globally in this pandemic, around the world, those who are hungry, those who are panicking, those who thinking that suicide is the only option. The devil is a liar. We come against drug addiction and drug overdose. We come against domestic violence and abuse. We speak peace to our hearts, to our homes, to our nation, to our country, to our churches. Let even our kingdom churches use wisdom. Let us know the difference between faith, wisdom, and foolishness. God, we ask you for favor. And last but certainly not least, we need a deposit of more your anointing so that you get all the glory and we have the power to fulfill the assignments that you set for our life. Touch grieving families, broken hearts, 
weary spirit. Heal the tears. And cease the fears, God. We thank you that it's done tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.